Hi, gorgeous souls. I am Lady Stars on Fire. My real name is Michelle Espinosa. This is the weekly healing messages or the weekly energy report for August 17th through the 22nd. It is time to start individually breaking the cage, breaking that matrix, and exercising that machine from within. When we start to individually shift our lives by spiritually growing and maturing and working with the energy, we are able to come together as a unit in whole soulfulness, whole soulfulness, and start breaking and exercising the machine from within. Now, last week, when I was doing the astrology reading, I was speaking to us about coming into our power, speaking to us about godly energy that was in the astrology, in the stars. And we're still seeing some of that in this week's astrology. However, let me put it to you this way. As we start to come into more of that godding energy within ourselves, we also have to look at reflection. Because godding energy is creation. It is how we create, how we manifest. But we also have to look at reflection as to where it is we need to tweak it. Where it is we need to do it better. And we're looking at a lot of that this week. Now, this is the situation. We are coming into a full moon in Aquarius, which is going to have a void, of course, into Pisces. And when I get into the astrology, I will speak more to you about that. But we need to really look at what season we're in. Because on the same day as the full moon, that Virgo, we become... We're going into Virgo season, which means the sun will be moving into Virgo, which means your core energies are going to be coming from a Virgo standpoint. And on a universal standpoint, when we look at it, Virgo is that sixth house. And the sixth house speaks to us of our everyday daily tasks, our mundane tasks, our health, our diet, our hygiene. How we take care of ourselves. But now it has Regulus in this energy. In general, like I said, it takes fixed stars approximately 72 years just to travel one degree. And Regulus is now part of Virgo. So everything about your daily tasks, your mundane tasks, <clears throat> your health, your diet, your lifestyle itself is coming into looking at it from... The roar of the lion, the heart of the lion, and is this serving my higher purpose? This week, we are seeing a lot, a lot. It's like fixed star city, okay? And Spirit is telling me that this has a lot to do with retrogrades. It's retrograde city, too. And I'm going to explain things from the point of view of how Spirit taught me, because that's the key here. Hi, Tara. That is the key here. Um, because fixed stars, they move very slowly, but they add extra oomph, extra power into whatever is going on where the planet is going through. So it's adding extra energy to that. But your retrogrades are seriously, we have, what, seven retrogrades at the time? I mean, and during this week, it'll turn into seven because of Uranus going retrograde. Spirit explains to me when I start to do astrology and I'm starting to help people, you know, when I have individual charts, that when we have a retrograde in our natal chart, from the moment you're born, it's working against you because retrograde means everything slows down. So, we were just coming out of Leo season. Leo is the roar of the lion. Now we're moving into Virgo season during this week. So, we, we had retrogrades already happening, but we had the roar of the lion. It was Leo season. We're leaving Leo season. We're coming into Virgo season. And this is important for us to realize this. Because as we're coming into Virgo season with all of these retrogrades, this means it's a time to slow down. Get your self-consciousness in action. 
of your communication inwardly and outwardly, your sensitivity with that communication inwardly and outwardly, because we're needing to take a good reflection. Retrograde slow everything down, but in a natal chart, it also works against you in the way Spirit explains it to me until you learn how to flip that over and turn it into one of your biggest and most powerful assets. And this is why it's important, and this is exactly why I'm doing this video this way, because Spirit is wanting me to speak about this retrograde season. Well, we have seven retrogrades right now. We're going into Virgo season, and everything that has been going off, like the roar, is going to slow down. The progress of that movement is going to start to slow down because it's time for reflection. That inner godding energy only remains an alpha, only remains a godding, only is able to stay divine because it is able to reflect and learn from its mistakes. And that is what we're looking at right now. When you're born with these planets in retrograde, that means they're automatically working against you until you learn to realize what it is about them is working against you. And what I mean by that is, okay, like I have Jupiter in retrograde in my natal chart, which means I can abundantly talk myself into any bad negative stuff real quick because it's retrograde, especially in my communication house. Okay, and what I'm trying to get at is while we're looking at these retrogrades that are happening in our life, you have to realize what your triggers are that are going against you. Because while we're going backwards, we're looking at the reflections, the asset here in any retrograde situation is to understand where the reflection is reflecting in the negative way, where it is showing you what you do wrong. That's not good for you so that you can shift it, change it, and then put it back onto a positive standpoint, a po positive outflowing of energy. Right there is where your assets come. But each and every one of you will have a different form of that asset taking place inside of you according to where it is in your natal chart. Now, some of you don't have your natal charts, but I'm still going to give you a, a better flow of this energy as we're coming through because of the way spirit explains it to me. You need to be very aware of knowing thyself. Knowing thyself is self-consciousness. And then adding it and applying it to where it's triggering your inner communication, your inner sensitivity of your inner communication, where you talk bad to yourself, where you break yourself down, where you... Don't give yourself, you know, the pat on the back, but in fact, you're pushing yourself in the other direction. Where is your habits something that you've created? Where are you in your comfort zone? Where are you not growing? Because as we come into Virgo season, we're looking at the detail-oriented situation here. We're about to start picking this motherfucker apart, okay? And this is talking about from our inside out into the outer world. It's the wake-up call to realize how to create properly by realizing where creation was done incorrectly by yourself as well as all the way up into our political world and what it is we're standing for and we're fighting for and we're changing within our lives. Okay, on the 16th, Venus moves into Libra. Now, don't forget, most people aren't going to be talking anything about Libra other than Venus moving into Libra. Libra is the seventh house. It's your relationship zone. But what nobody's going to be talking about here is that Halmea and Make Make are in Libra. Make Make is the lotus flower. I'll go through this again. The lotus flower is one of the most highly spiritual evolved flowers that we use for symbols in spirituality in our soulful growth. It grows from a muddy, murky, nasty swamp. And then it finally breaks through that frothy middle land, and then it starts stretching towards the light. So where are you in your life? And like I said, you're moving from Leo into Virgo season. So wherever the sun is, is where you are in your life. That's where your core energies are. Okay? 
So even if it's your 11th house, we're still talking about it picking up that 6th house energy of all that detail-oriented energy of your daily routines, your people, places, and things of energies that you consume, consume you. I cannot say that enough times. The people, places, and things of energies that you consume on a daily basis consume you. So we're talking about your relationships as well. And like I say, your relationships are anything you care about. You have a relationship with your money. You have a relationship with your friends. You have a relationship with your children. You have a relationship with your working environment. You have anything that you care about, you have a relationship with. And what is this relationship doing within your daily routines and your mundane tasks? There's never anything mundane about the mundane. It's just become a habit. So where are these habits working for you or working against you? <clears throat> Libra in that relationship zone has make make there asking you are you seeing things from the murky water there is an above there is a below and I can see there is two sides of everything are you seeing it from the swamp and you can't see anything or are you seeing it from stretching into the light and actually being able to breathe the truth again. By facing the truth, facing the inner godding, facing the creativity of who and what you are, so that you can create, literally. All right, not to mention how Maya is here. I mean, Make Make is here. Make Make was the other, how Maya is the, I always get them confused. But what I'm trying to get at is how Maya is the collective consciousness, the very collective consciousness. So I'm talking about us as a soul unit in our daily routines, our daily mundane tasks. What do we allow to slide? What do we tell ourselves it's okay and it's not? This is where we're learning to come into the power by correcting where we were not in our power and exa understanding exactly where we've made misfortunes within our, or paralyzed ourselves within our lives and made ourselves stagnant. This is what we're starting to look at as we come into this month. This is a very powerful thing. The collective consciousness is right there in the relationship zone trying to help you out. The 19th, Uranus goes retrograde. On the 22nd, we have the full moon and sun enters Virgo. The full moon is in Aquarius. However, it is at eight, like 8.03 in the morning and then it is going into Pisces like by 8.40. So the full moon of that morning, you're going to feel that energy, but it's going to shift into Pisces. So it's going to have a whole, your, your, that full moon is somewhat of picking up both Aquarius and Pisces energy and you need to be aware of that. You have Jupiter in retrograde in Aquarius at 27 degrees and it's sitting on a fixed star with Venus and Mercury's energy. I'm not going to go into each and every one of the fixed stars because they're loaded fixed stars. Jupiter and Aquarius sitting on the first fixed star with Mercury and Venus energy. This means Jupiter is going to be extra sensitive and extra communicative, but it's going to be only communicating with you. It's not communicating outwardly. And it is sitting in that 11th house. Okay? The 11th house is your outer projected world. It is your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. But do those goals, dreams, and ambitions actually get to get met because of the people that you have in your life? Are they asking you to support their dreams, goals, and ambitions, but they're not supporting yours? It's going to be extra abundant, extra sensitive, and extra communicative this week. So they can go very positive or negative. This is why I said I'm being told. Spirit is reminding me. You need to pay attention to your retrogrades. Retrogrades mean automatically that outer world isn't going to be seeing things the way you are. Because the retrogrades mean it only speaks to you. It's not speaking outwardly in a more positive way. It's only speaking to you about the reflection going on inside of your mind, heart, soul, body. Jupiter, 11th house. Goals, dreams, ambitions. Are you able to meet them? 
why or why not and take a good look at those peers that you have in your life and are they supportive or not extra sensitivity extra communication Saturn is also in Aquarius it is sitting on a fixed star which also has Venus and Saturn energy which is making Saturn doubled up in retrograde extra sensitive and extra doubled up meaning you're wanting to put your guard up you're wanting to put your guard up you're wanting to look at your what your reservations are here? What are your restrictions here? What are your boundaries here? That doesn't mean that they're wrong, but that also doesn't mean that they're right. You've got extra sensitivity going on in that outer world with those goals, dreams, ambitions, as well as the people, your peers, your memberships. Do they support you? Do you really need to set those boundaries higher? Do you need to shift them? And pay attention to the sensitivity. Venus, I will tell you over and over again, is not love. I don't care how many astrologers want to say that. Venus speaks to you about your sensitivities. She speaks to you about your physical sensitivities as well as your emotional sensitivities. And she reminds you when something hurt you, why it hurt. So that you don't make the mistake again. I say this all the time. If you're putting your hand in an oven at 365 degrees to grab those cookies... And you don't have an oven mitt on and you burn the shit out of your hand. That is Venus telling you, don't do that. That hurts me. So you're talking about rules, walls, boundaries, restrictions. <coughs> in the 11th house of the outer world. That support or don't support your goals, dreams, and ambitions. Do they need to be shifted? Are they shifted incorrectly right now? Do they need to be shifted and worked out in whole new ways? Listen to your sensitivity here. Listen to your inner, inner communication and allow yourself to realize where you have the bad habits because it's time to shift them and make them work for you. Like I said, retrogrades work against you until you know how to apply them to become assets. Neptune is in Pisces at 22 degrees, sitting on a fixed star again that amplifies Mars, Venus, and Mercury energy. Neptune is your magic. It's your 12th house also right now. And it's at 22 degrees. We're we're coming in, you know, we're still only in like that second deacon. I mean, magic is what you create. So what are you creating? If you're creating from hysteria, if you're creating from fear, if you're cre creating from worry and annoyance and you know, paranoia, then you're going to give yourself so much more to be creating against yourself. 12th house is your grief, sorrow, shame, insecurities. Your insecurities are trying to tell you where you're lying to yourself. Mars is Mars, Venus, and Saturn is in this energy. No, Mars, Venus, and Mercury is in this energy with Neptune, trying to teach you how to use your magic to act accordingly. To overcome your insecurities, your grief, sorrow, shame, blame, your skeletons in the closet. How are you talking to yourself? Are you positively being aggressive or negatively being aggressive? Because what you think... Remember, Godding energy is in each and every one of us. And what you think and how you keep it in your mind is how you create. Pluto is the spirit itself. Pluto is begging you. That's all Pluto is ever, uh, ever doing is begging us to be our true soulful existence. Pluto is in Capricorn, which is the outer world. It's the outer world, but it's the political arena as well. So, the political arena is going through death, decay, and destruction for rebirth, regeneration. But are you? It will try to grow on its own. I do not know how to put it in the most, in a, in a better way. I say, I said last week in our video of the energy for the week, that when you are in your power, not from... A point of view that is dictatorish or controlling and possessive and manipulative. But when you're in your power, because you are able to stand in your power, 
you don't have to defend yourself for someone else's ego. You don't have to defend yourself just to prove yourself right for your own ego. I'm in my power. I know my inner chaos. I know how to harness and control it so that I can know how to use it accordingly and get my power. This is all part of what I'm talking about. Pluto in that outer world? Make no mistake when I say that the negative energies, I'm sorry to put it that way, but the negative energies are getting worried about losing their power. And believe me, they're in combat training. So when I talk to you about getting in your power, your soulful power, starting to harness your power, then you need to be in your own combat training. And this is part of reflection. This is part of how we harness our power. But we have to reflect on where we do ourselves ugly, where we cripple ourselves, where we paralyze ourselves, where we keep backing down and we fall to the same habits over and over again, where we need to see these things so that we can go, oh, right there's that ding-dong warning, I need to shift that into other gear. Like I said, I was born with, I was born with most of my planets in the communication house of the third house in a retrograde. Meaning, if anybody knows how to talk themselves into a low vibration, honey, you're looking at her. And I've had to teach myself. As soon as I start hearing that inner chatter, talk bad to myself, nope, nope, nope. Shut that shit down. Void, cancel, delete. We're going to turn this, flip it over, and we're going to start po talking positive. You have to learn where your negatives are, in order to make them assets. So pay attention to your negatives this week. This week your negatives are warnings trying to teach you this is how you create an asset by learning what you do that cripple, cripple, to cripple yourself, to paralyze yourself, to keep you stagnant. Because that's the best advice I can give you on a soulful understanding because like I said that outer world is sitting back there quietly especially in that political arena trying to with its negative energies starting its combat training to come back at you and it's time for you to learn how to start doing your own combat training to bring that soul purpose up and out of you and bring that positive energy positive trajectory is what I just heard, up out of you, you have to learn how to create the assets from within yourself. Uranus will go retrograde in Taurus on the 19th. Like I said, Taurus is your second house. It is how you create and spend your money. It is also how you create your manifestation according to your self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. But it is also small possessions. And I do not know how to say it enough times. When someone, especially with Uranus in retrograde in Taurus, is not feeling freedom, not feeling secure within themselves, what they're going to try to do is become controlling and make you their possession. This is why it's important for you to know how to stand in your power. To come into self-righteousness. And dignity and love oneself. Because those who cannot find that within themselves are going to become incredibly dictator, dictatorish. I don't care if it's a word. I made it up. I don't give a shit. So very dictatorish, very controlling, very possessive. I've been saying for a long time now, especially if you're in relationships and you're in a relationship with someone who is very controlling. That narcissist energy is just about to grow. It's time for you to learn what is good for you and what is not and how to stand in your power, baby. Uranus can be very powerful if you're knowing how to stand in your power. Otherwise, you're controlling someone else's power or you're allowing someone else to become more in power who really doesn't deserve it. Chiron is sitting on Another fixed star, which is Saturn and Jupiter energy. So it's the wounded healer with rules, walls, and boundaries and abundance. You're being told 
Yes, shift those rules, shift those boundaries with abundance, but do it from the heart and soul. Do it from acknowledging where your bad habits keep leading you into crippleized. I'm just making up words today. Cripple, crippled energies, where they keep keeping you in stagnant energies. Chiron, the wounded healer, is in Aries. It's a beginning process. Like I said, retrograde city sitting on top of fixed star city. You've got energies coming at you out of everywhere, from every flipping corner this week. And it's asking you, do you know yourself? Are you conscious of yourself? Are you conscious of the godding seeding energy that you are creating? And are you able to be responsible for where you've created ill? So that you can start a brand new season. Energies are going to slow down. We're not in that Leo's roar anymore. Or we're coming out of it come the 19th. And we're getting into Virgo season. This is, like I said, it's all about your daily routines and what you do from the heart and soul of your mundane. And nothing about the mundane is ever mundane. It's just overlooked. It's a habit. So, Talk about your inner emotional security. Where is your inner emotional security? Have bad habits that's keeping you from actually getting to that emotional security. And knowing how to attach the truth to the mundane. So you can shift your rules, walls, and boundaries. Pallas, which is Athena, the warrior goddess, she's all about strategic thinking. She's also in retrograde right next to Pisces. You have the power to create the most glorious world from your inside out if you would only use it as an asset by noticing where you are your own victim or where you've caused yourself in this situation. 12th house, inner emotional security, again, through grief, sorrow, shame, blame, there's skeletons in the closet, the lies that you don't want to face yourself. Pluto is asking you to face yourself. Pallas is sitting on Mars, Venus, Mercury star energies. So this is asking you, you can be very aggressive and move forward in the most positive of ways, but will you? Will you acknowledge your own consciousness so that you can bring it forward? Acknowledge this week. Slow down reflection because this is a very powerful week of energies coming everywhere. You still have the serious star is still sextiling Uranus. Even though it's going retrograde, this is asking you, again, the serious star is Thor's hammer energy. It is God's consciousness energy coming out of the fourth house, which is your inner emotional security, people. It is, I, I like to put it this way, your soul can never be taken from you, but you can misplace it. So if you've misplaced pieces or fragments of your soul, by giving it false habits, false truths, this is the time to acknowledge it, reclaim it, call your energies back to you, and then put that Thor's hammer behind it. It's getting well wonderfully with Uranus energy. Independence, individuality, uniqueness, freedom, self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. And the abundance of being able to create from that power if you will turn that asset on. But with Uranus going retrograde, this is going to make you question your independence, your individuality, your uniqueness, your freedom. And for those who are very much not in their power, they're going to become very entitled and very possessive and controlling for like the next six months. Because they're not in their power and they do not know how to get in it. And this is why it's important for you to understand how to get in it. And to get in it in the right way, not in a negative way. In a positive form that is allowing you to do it not with an entitlement, not with that dictatorish energy, not with possessive and controlling energy. Like I said, when you are in your power, I don't have to defend myself just to make your ego feel better. I don't have to defend myself just to make my ego feel better. I know how and when I need to defend myself. And if I do, oh, 
you will know all the fuck about it when I do. But, I'm not going to do it just for ego purposes. This is what I'm talking about. Liberated energy. Powerful energy is powerful enough to be feared because they know better than to mess with you. And you have to know how to handle that power, harness that power with spiritual, soulful maturity. And then create. Sirius star again, like I said, is sextiling Uranus, which is making it, the power is there, but it might also be a little lazy. It might be a little, yeah, I know it, and let things slide. But you could find out that good opportunities could come from this by showing that you are authentic this week. It is also sextiling Virgo, which has Mars and Mercury entered. Mars and Mercury really do not eat the little cord little shit. Sorry, talking to Neptune, my cat. Virgo is sitting right next to. I mean, Mars and Mercury are within one degree of each other. But they are also coming on top of fixed stars that is energy of Saturn and Venus. So you might as well just add Mars, Venus, Saturn, and Mercury. All in Virgo right now. Okay? Extra sensitivity to your daily tasks, your daily routines. What did Mommy just tell you? You cannot eat that cord. Sorry, talking to Neptune again. <laughs> your daily routines, your mundane tasks, they support who and what you will be. The people, places, and things of energies. Virgo is, I don't like to call Virgo the, I don't like to call Virgo the virgin. Because I don't see Virgo as the virgin. I see Virgo as the lie detector, the truth detector. And Mars, Mercury, fire, I mean Mars, fire, passion, aggressive energy. Mercury, communication. Communication doesn't give a shit. It's going to communicate. It can be positive, it can be negative. It depends on how you choose to take it. Then you, it's sitting on top of the fixed stars of Saturn and Venus, bringing it into extra powerful energies this week. And like I said, it's talking to the serious star. So it's telling you, I need to change this. I need to start doing this more healthier. I need to start doing this in a, in a better habit for my, create better habits for myself. I need to make sure that I have the, I'm sorry, but you want to have the right people in your life. If you have people who are, you know, like Debbie Downer, you know, and is all negative, what do you think that's doing to you? If they're always in their shit, then there, more or less, shit is rubbing off on you. From the diets that you keep, to your hygiene, to your health care, to your routines. Like I say, some people go jogging every day. Some people are musicians and they're writing music. Some people are doing art. Some people spend every day at the bar, okay? To each their own. But we're talking about the sensitivities, the truth, the action, the aggression, the communication, the rules, the walls, the boundaries, all in that mundane energy of your daily routines. You are what you create because you are what you consume. And believe me, it consumes you just as much. Sirius Star is not getting along with Chiron. Chiron's the wounded healer. That, uh, that godding energy is trying to show you over and over again. This is where I screw up. This is where I don't heal. This is where I stick my head, you know, in, you know, like whatever animal that is, sticks his head in the ground. This is where, you know, I, I dust everything under the carpet because I don't want to heal. If I ignore it, uh, it'll be fine. No. This is about acknowledging it, seeing it through. And admitting to yourself where you have caused yourself harm so that you can be responsible into fixing it and creating what you want. That serious star, God's consciousness, Thor's hammer. It's not getting along with Vista either. Vista is in Libra, like I said, the collective conscious in Hal Halmea. 
the seventh house of relationships. It's the keys to knowledge. And the keys to knowledge mean you have to be admitting and willing to see where you aren't using the freaking keys. So it's acknowledging within the relationships which relationships are healthy and which ones are not. And are they helping you get where? Blunt, blunt truths. Where are these relationships taking you? Are they healthy for you? Or, or maybe it's time to set them free. You have a yod, which is another godding energy. Still taking place this week. It's the finger of God is what a yod is. And in Hebrew... Yod stands, Yod is the smallest letter of the alphabet, but it's the most mightiest because it's the creation itself. Okay? And that Yod is pointing directly to Virgo this week. Virgos and Geminis, your energies are going to be off the flip and chain this week. The Yod is pointing to Virgo. Again, Mars and Mercury energy. Sitting on top of energies of fixed stars of Saturn and Venus. So, it's action, fire, passion, aggression, communication, sensitivity, and rules, walls, and boundaries. Speaking to your first house of Chiron, this yacht is. Speaking to the wounded healer. And how do we heal the wounds? How do we set a new direction? How do we start a new example? How do we set a new foundation? It is also speaking with Saturn, rules, walls, and boundaries. If you find yourself feeling like being liberated and standing in your power and doing it, do so. But make sure you're listening to your heart and soul. Make sure ego's not tripping you up into doing it from an old habit. Make sure that you're doing it in a way that provides spiritual, soulful growth, okay? Because this is all about changing your routine, changing yourself, so that that God-seeding energy is actually going through reflection, and strengthening, and growing, okay? New boundaries. New boundaries, new restrictions, new courage, New routines, new mundane self. Nothing is ever mundane. Changing the habits. By realizing where we've told ourselves things that are untrue to keep ourselves comfortable. That fix, I mean, that yod is pointing directly to Virgo energy. Like I said, and Virgo is going to be the core. That's the season that you're moving into this week. So wherever it is in your natal chart, this, that Virgo is, is where you're going to be getting targeted. Then it is sitting on top of a T-square. A very positive, powerful, positive energy sitting on top of a T-square, which is a very questioning energy. T-squares sets obstacles, meaning I'm not going to make this easy for you. Not at all. If you want to grow, you're going to work for it and you're going to earn it. You're going to do your part. You're going to get back to soulful righteousness by actually getting back to soulful righteousness and standing in that power. Like I said, harnessing the power of your righteousness comes from knowing how to control your inner chaos. That T-square is also sitting on Virgo, but it is talking to the nodes. Now, the nodes' energy is all about how... The nodes serve the moon. The moon is our emotions and our physical body. You're talking about the north, north node in this T-square speaking to Cirrus. Cirrus is all about mothering and nurturing, but she will hit under the belt. She will hit under the belt with the threefold. And we're talking about the communication you give yourself. So if you're in your shit this week, if you're in your head this week... Turn that shit off and get out of it. Because the North Node, Cirrus, is promising to hit below the belt in order to nurture you back to reality if you will learn where the asset is in the retrogrades. Nodes always are in retrograde. So this is the communication of up close and everything that's personally important to you that relates to your daily 
mundane life. Everything that's so important that you don't even realize it's important because you do it every day. It is speaking to the 12th house. I mean, it, not the 12th house. It is speaking to the other node, which is the south node. Everything that you're really good at in the ninth house. And both nodes are sitting on energies of Saturn, Mercury, and Venus. Extra sensitivity. The south node is everything that you're good at, but it's not good for you. So where have you told yourself over and over again that the ethics and the morals behind the stories you tell yourself are okay when you know damn well they're not. Where are you going to make the courageous decisions to stand in your power? All of that is sending chain reactions through astrology that I'm not even going to get into because that's too much. But it's sending chain, re chain reactions of emotional communication. Emotional communication, like I said. And that's going to be hitting really hard in Gemini energy and Virgo energy this week. Uranus is not getting along with Saturn. So standing in your power, the outer world is going to push on you. The outer world doesn't want to lose its power either, honey. The other outer world wants to set its direction, its timeline, its decisions. Are you going to allow it to? Your honest going retrograde is going to ask you, where are you standing with your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem, your liberated rights and power? How do you feel about yourself? That is how manifestation takes place. It manifests from how you feel about yourself because that's what you bring to you. So understanding that that inner outer world of goals, dreams, ambitions, and the outer world of your groups and your memberships, are they supporting you or not? Because you may be finding it's time to change memberships, plain and simple, and stand in your own dignity, your own power, your own liberated truth. But make sure that it's not coming from, you know, that pushing entitled energy. Uranus, though, is getting along wonderfully with all this energy going on in Taurus. So it is, not Taurus, sorry, with all this energy, because Uranus is Taurus, in Taurus. It is getting along great with that Virgo energy of Mars and Mercury. So, standing in your power is wonderfully. It's just depending on how well you stand in your power. Because is it your power or is it your ego's fear? Communication, like I said, from within yourself. When you know that you have your power, you know that you're not going to get shaken by the outer world. The outer world's going to try to shake you this week. That's what it's coming down to. But if you're able to stand in your power, you know that you are liberated. You know that they can't shake you off of your strong-footed foundation. But is your foundation strong is the question. So that you can not be pushed around. Like I said, Uranus is getting along great with Virgo. Coming into your power. Coming into your inner communication. Coming into setting those rules, walls, and boundaries. Coming into your Venus energy. Your sensitivity and how you feel about yourself. But the point is, will you act from being entitled, ergo, Virgo, ego standpoint, from possessive and controlling, or will you stand from, like I said, I don't have to fight with you. I mean, if I have to fight with you in the long run, then I know exactly how I'll take you out. But the point is, I don't have to lower myself just to boost your ego. And that is part of the key you're going to find this week. Jupiter is not getting along with Chiron. Like I said, that wanting to heal is there, but will you do it? Jupiter is in retrograde. The abundance coming from the outer world. Trying to make you question and think about if you really should be with these people, these teams, these groups, these memberships. Do they support you? 
Or you just keep telling yourself that they do, but you know damn well they don't. Jupiter and Sun. And all orders take their job. I mean, all planets take their orders from the sun. The abundance and retrograde from that outer world is going, I don't think so. And the sun's like, Psst, I don't need to worry about you because I am the fucking sun. This is what I'm trying to get through to your head, honey. The sun's not getting along with Pluto because that's death, decay, and destruction for rebirth, regeneration. Will you see yourself? For all that you are, good and bad, so that you can make the reflection corrections. We're slowing down for corrections. The sun also is not getting along with Neptune. The way that you create that magic from that 12th house. This is asking you to fully, do you have courage to come into your power? Like I said, this is asking you to harness your power by controlling your chaos and acknowledging what chaos is making you stagnant. What chaos from inside of you, in your head, makes you paralyzed. What chaos keeps you from being able to change habits. Because these are where you create your magic. By learning how to acknowledge what you do wrong so that you can correct it. And Neptune's not getting along with Saturn. So like I said, the power's there. But the way Spirit reminds me is you have to understand all these planets that are in retrograde are showing you what you do that harms yourself, that keeps you stagnant, keeps you from moving forward. Acknowledging that is the key. Because when you acknowledge it, you void, cancel, delete it. I'm not playing this game anymore. Now I'm in my power. I love you guys. Bye.